it's in our best interest to come together. I also don't identify with being white in the sense that it's understood in America today. Am I considered white? Yes. In reality, it's peach with lots of dots. But, <laughs> uh, I don't look to see if something benefits white people exclusively or judge someone's actions differently because of the color of their skin, but objectively by the content of their character. I, do I deny racism or its pervasiveness or its history? No. Do I deny white privilege? No. But I don't see it as a privilege to live the way we do. That's right. I will quote David Gilbert. Uh, on one hand, he's talking about the white working class and identifying with the oppressor. On one hand, there is the class designation that should simply imply it with all other workers of the world, a fundamental role in the overthrow of capitalism. On the other hand, there is an identification of being part of a white oppressor nation. I do not identify, nor do I align myself with white supremacy. When I look at Bush, and because he's a white male, does that make me identify with him? No. He's a rich war criminal whose actions have made him an enemy to the enemies of the people. As Mumia Jamal said, it doesn't matter who gets elected. What people need to understand, Mumia Jamal is a political prisoner. Uh, he's, he was one of the best journalists, and that's why he was put in jail. Um, so anyway, it doesn't matter who gets elected. What people need to understand, what really get, is that they should demand through their activity in the streets, that everywhere and everywhere else, what kind of system they want and what kind of system they oppose. I mean, if they, people feel it's honky-dory if they get a black president, they will be like the people in Philadelphia who believe everything is great when they had a black mayor. It really doesn't matter the color someone is. It matters what's in their mind. It is what they're thinking about. Are they in support of empire? Really, support of democracy. If you think what this war we're in the middle of is in order uh, this war to happen, the government had to ignore not just millions of people here in the United States, but tens of millions of people around the world. Some of the biggest demonstrations of the world. So we were talking about an anti-democratic system, and that system can only be changed, not by the system itself, but by the people. I'm Mumia, not because he's black, but because he's intelligent, and his actions are that which stand on the side of the oppressed for equality and freedom. I neither identify with male supremacy or patriarchy, nor do I deny its existence or its pervasiveness. Again, I don't view it a privilege to live the way we do. I have a mother, and I have uh, yeah, I got a lot of people I love, and I would, it wouldn't make me happy if she was mistreated because she was a woman. I quote Sinead O'Connor, The opposite of patriarchy is not matriarchy, but fraternity. I think it's women who are going to have to break this spiral of power yeah. and trick, of co and a trick <laughs> to cooperation. I also do not identify with the human race before all their life on this planet. That this planet is our provider, and all giving, and it's all giving, and we need it for life, water, soil, and air, and we should treat it with respect that way. I'm going to quote uh, Fred Hampton Jr. He says, we don't, he's talking about the Black Panther Party, we don't think you fight fire with fire, we think you fight fire with water. We're not going to fight racism with racism, we're going to fight racism with solidarity. We're not going to fight capitalism with black capitalism, but we're going to fight it with socialism. We're here to say we're not going to fight reactionary pigs and reactionary state attorneys like the reactionary state attorneys like Hanrahan with any other reaction in our pet. We're going to fight it with reactions with any, we're going to fight their reactions with all other people getting together and having an international proletariat revolution. <laughs> this, this battle is breaking the chains and kicking the cop out of our own heads and not buying any of the garbage that tells you your self-interest is independent of others. That really, in cooperation and unity, we can be powerful beyond measure. Uh, once you change your philosophy, you change your thought pattern. Once you change your thought pattern, it changes your behavior pattern, or your attitude. Once you change your attitude, that changes your behavior pattern. Then you go on to some action. That's by Malcolm X. Uh, this, is, this is the end, last page, so this is, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a protracted struggle. And for me, we never achieve our goals. It is in the process and not the end result we are fighting for. That what life is an ongoing process, fluid and adaptable like water. So don't wait or not act because you're waiting for the perfect answer or until the right circumstances is here or because you feel so bad or because you feel so guilty because you're white or you're black or you're male or because you're a woman. Any reason you have to feel bad, or, and just, just, just don't buy into it. You, it's going to be there, but don't buy into it. Go out, take action based on love, justice, freedom. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Be right or wrong. Live out of fear. We need our minds to be able to think clearly and coherently, to reassess constantly that we are in touch with people in the earth and in balance, and we can continually grow and develop on this planet, not stay stuck in a pattern of irrationality because we identify with being a police officer, or identify with being a Democrat, or identify with being whatever it is you identify with. Think. They can never outlaw that. 
Or they would if they're ready. <laughs> Again, I'm going to say, I freed a thousand slaves. I could have freed a thousand more if they only knew they were slaves. Um, that was back when people, look, Harriet Tubman would go back down south to try to bring slaves up, and people wouldn't go with her because they literally didn't know that they were slaves. Um, and this is what we're dealing with today. So what we just talked about, you are the key factor, and it starts in your mind, in our minds. So I state in conclusion, an injury to one is an injury to all. That's not just a phrase or a concept. That is real. The quote, first they came to so for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I wasn't a socialist. Then they came for trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I'm not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. They, then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Well, that's because he wasn't speaking out against those people because he didn't identify with who they were. But it's not about the identifications. We're all humans on this planet together. So it doesn't matter who you are, we should be speaking out and standing together. It doesn't matter. Like, I, it's not because if, he would have, if there wasn't all these divisions amongst ourselves, we would be in a much stronger position. It is freedom. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, so if you are too afraid or self... Basically what he's saying is if you're too afraid or self-interested to do anything, then the same fate will happen upon you. It is freedom for everybody or it's freedom for nobody. This isn't just lip service. It isn't about being a good person or moral. It isn't about doing the right thing. It's about taking a stand, irregardless of class, race, religion, and sex, for human humanity. Because, not because it's the right thing, it's about the survival of us all. And being a stand for life, being the priority of this planet, and being part of the interconnected web, that you are a part, whether you want to agree with that or not. So when you, t when you take a stand with me, and you come to my court case, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not about me personally, uh, Nate Buckley, it's about taking a stand with humanity, taking a stand for justice, freedom, and equality. Yeah. I'm not fearing the consequences of the state or force. No consequences are mighty, mightier than the betraying myself or my people. That's right. Mace, jail, courts are not going to deter me. Nope, I'm connected to a higher law. We can overflow the courtrooms. We can shut down the machine. We can take back this world. We can, because we can create it. All power to the people. Thank you. <laughs> Now I'd like